Hello everyone, welcome back to Triplus Tutorials. So today we are going to play around with ESP Home. So ESP Home is a tool that will allow you to create firmware for your ESP devices, which are usually like the Arduino type boards with Wi-Fi on board and so on. You will be able to create your own firmware just using YAML, which is the same config language you use for Home Assistant, so it's quite useful. The good thing about this compared to how I've been doing it, which is just writing it in the Arduino IDE, is that there's this dashboard, you can upload firmware to your devices, you can check if they're online, you can track them, so it's so easy. And also it integrates out of the box with Home Assistant, which is really, really, really useful in my opinion. So I played a little bit around with it already. As you can see, I have a, a test note, which was supposed to be test note, but uh, I made a small typing error. But that doesn't matter because we're going to create a new one today. So in the small video that you may have seen or that is currently playing, or I don't know yet how I'm doing it, you will see that I'm connecting a temperature sensor to my Note MCU. The Note MCU is an ESP8266, I think, uh, which you're able to flash also with this. And I've connected the temperature sensor to it just uh, via, via your wires, your jumper wires. And it's a waterproof temperature sensor that I will use to put in my last aquarium that doesn't have the temperature tracked yet. In the future, I will also connect all my other custom written Arduino applications to ESP Home, but for now let's start working on this one. So of course the first thing we do is click on this very fancy plus button over here. As you can see we have the ESP8266, so name of node will be Office, well, I'm going to call it Primo70 Aquarium Continue. We have a node MCU, and to be fair I can't remember. Ah, not MCU. There we go. So the Wi-Fi SSID. I'm just going to write this for now because I will change those later on. Click continue and click submit. So there we go. We have we have my Primo 70 aquarium over here. We are going to upload over the air, but of course the first time that is not possible. So I'm going to make some small edits already. Because I've written my config files in a secrets file, which is the same way you do it for Home Assistant, so that's it's quite useful. So we have the API and we have passwords. Let's save it. That should be A-OK. -okay. And I'm going to, let me think, compile it over here. The reason why I'm compiling here is because the first time that we're uploading it, we need to actually have the firmware. <laughs> Apparently you can't skip So, Primo, Levity. Let's try that again. I didn't expect that. Okay, so it's going to compile now. It takes a while. As I explained earlier, this is running on the Docker. So... I haven't given it too much processing power. The NAS it is running on is not the strongest out there, so this will take a while.
Okay, so now we have the successfully compiled program. As you can see, it took uh, a while. So let's download the binary. Let me think where I'm supposed to save it. Projects, ESP home, oh, ESP home, and let's save it. And then now in this folder, I downloaded the ESP home flasher, which you can also download from the same source over, over, over there. Of course, I need to plug in my ESP. Let's see if it recognize it now. So we have a port. Let's browse for this. Let's click flash. To be fair, I'm not sure if I need to hold the flash button or not. I think it's going fine. Okay, setting up Wi-Fi, starting scan. Wi-Fi connected. Okay, so it seems we are connected. And then hopefully, as you can see, the Primo Aquarium is online. Of course, right now we haven't had added any sensors yet. So let's do that. And the first thing I'm going to do is also add MQTT. The reason why that I'm adding MQTT is that in case I ever want to do something else than Home Assistant, I won't have to reflash all of them. But it's, it's something small. Then the dollars on, on the pin that I have it connected to. And then I'm also going to put the next face in it already. And you will see why or how I got this number in just a short while. So if I save this, I'm going to delete this one. If I click upload on this one, it will start compiling it again. Because I added MQTT, the Dallas sensor and so on. It will take additional time again. So let's wait for this one to just do its thing and be back in whenever it's finished. Okay, as you can see, the compiling has been done. It is now trying to resolve the IP address of this local IP address. It found it and it's now uploading it over the air. Successfully uploaded the program. And we're now going to see the log output any minute now. Right, it, it's restarting in the meantime, so this error is normal. It will do that like two or three times if I'm not mistaken. And then it should go to showing the actual log if everything went successful, of course. Okay, there we go, it connected. So remember in the code, there was the sensor, the value that we didn't know where it came from. So when you just define the Dallas pin, it will show you this, and then you need to type the rest, and then it will know it. So here we go, the sensor is being recognized, it gave an output. Here you also see it is outputting to MQTT as I asked and we have some additional pins I guess uh, to, to show everything. So this is how I'm setting it up. Then go, let's go back to Home Assistant. Let's go to Configuration, Integration. We have ESP Home. I'm quickly going to remove this one. 
let's configure this one. Let's type in the password. This is the API password that we chose earlier in our code. It's now trying to connect. It successfully created the config. Now if I go to here and I type Primo70, I hope it's not there. Uh, let's integration, integration, SP home. It recognizes it from, from a different one, but that's okay. So I apparently it does recognize it very well, because if you go to edit here, it's already there because I didn't change the name. But normally you can just type in the same name, so office aquarium temperature. And if I then go back to ESP home and Okay, <laughs> if I go back to ESP home, you see if office aquarium temperature. So it chooses this name. So that's quite nice to be fair. And it's that easy right now to integrate different components or different sensors in one firmware that you have no need yourself to start writing code and so on because it was quite challenging in the past to keep everything maintained. If you made a small little change, you need to remove your device, reflash it, change it, make sure it's stable, blah blah blah. Here you just to make one change, I go to here, I click on edit, let's say I change the pin, I put a 2 here, I click save, I click upload, and it is done. It's that easy. So I really love this ESP Home. This is the first sensor that I'm connecting now using ESP Home, but I have two other sensor arrays that I will be changing to ESP Home. The first one is, yeah, basically it's these two, two groups, so the one for my for my big aquarium and the one for my shrimp rack. And it will be glorious, I'm sure. So with that information, I'm going to end the video here. It may be a shorter one than usual, but ESP Home is really that simple. I'm loving it a lot. And I will keep you guys updated on any progress I make on this. Again, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, and see you in the next one. Bye!